Good morning, welcome to day two of Tinkercad Bootcamp. Today, we're gonna to go over scaling, nodes, dimensions, and changing the colors of these objects. We're also gonna show you how to rotate them and raise them upwards. By the end of today, we will have made the body of our ski ball machine. Before we get started, in under 25 seconds, we're gonna review what we went over yesterday. To zoom in on your trackpad, if you have one, put two fingers together, touch down, and spread them apart. If you have a mouse, you're just scrolling up and scrolling down. To orbit or look at things from different angles, you're going to right click and drag. To pan, meaning to move right and left, you click down on both clicky buttons or click down on your scrolly button and drag. Let's get started. All right, we're going to jump straight into nodes. To figure out what nodes are, we're going to click and drag a box out into the center of our work plane. And when you let go, the box appears and the first thing you probably notice is these squares that pop up in the corners and on the edges. Those are called our nodes. There are black nodes and white nodes and they do different things. The white nodes allow you to change the size or the shape of your object in two directions. So I'm going to call like from here to here my width. From here to here is my length. The corner nodes let me change both the width and the length at the same time. The black nodes do not allow me to do that. And that's not a bad thing. That can be helpful. Um, like, let's say I was happy with the width, the distance from here to here, but I wanted to make it longer. I wouldn't want to use a corner node because chances are I'm going to screw up and make it a little skinnier or a little fatter. But remember, I wanted to keep it the same. So to make it longer while keeping the width the same, we use the black node, click and drag. And you can see I can move my mouse right and left, and that does not change the width. To make your object taller, you're going to use this top node. Uh, that just lets you change it in one direction. Now, another thing you'll notice when you're clicking on the nodes is there are these numbers that pop up. These numbers are called our dimensions and they're like the measurement. From here to here is 34 millimeters. From here to here is 35 millimeters. When we're just starting off, I don't like to pay too much attention to these numbers. It's important and we'll get to that, but for now, just make shapes that look about right. Now, let's say we wanted to make a cube but we wanted to make that cube bigger, like we wanted it to take up at least uh, a quarter of our work plane. Well, we could, remember a cube, the distance from here to here and here to here and its height or its length, its width and its height are all the same. If it's not the same, it's no longer a cube. Um, so let's say I wanted to turn this guy into a cube and I just wanted to manipulate the nodes to do that. I could probably say, yeah, that looks about good. That looks about good. Yeah, that's a cube, right? Well, let's see. Let's look at my dimensions. So here we are 81 by 83. So already it's not a, a square or a, a cube. It's, it's rectangular and its height is 72. So this is no longer a cube. Remember, I want to make a cube. I don't want a rectangle. So to do that, we are going to have to scale this up. To scale an object upwards, here's what that looks like. It looks like this. See, I click on one node, but it gets bigger all at the same rate. To scale an object, you're going to, with your left hand, click Shift and hold Shift. Then with your right hand, you're going to click on any node that you want and drag. So again, I said I wanted to take up about a quarter of the work plane. That looks about right. I'm going to zoom out. And let's double check that this is a cube. The length is 81, the width is 81, the height should also be 81, and it is beautiful. Now let's talk about uh, rotating and raising objects. Now we also need to change colors. Let's grab another cube out here, and let's bring a cylinder out here as well. Let's say I wanted both of these shapes to be blue. I like blue. You're going to click on this shape. You're going to come up here to where it shows our color in solid. You're going to click on that. And you can make it any color you want. Uh, let's just keep it with this blue. If you want a very specific color, you can click on custom and look at all those colors. Beautiful, right? I'm going to keep it simple. Just give it this shade of blue. I'm going to do the same thing to my cylinder. Blue. Uh, whenever you're working with cylinders, this is a little trick. 
they give you a cylinder that kind of looks circular, but it's also kind of liney. See all those jagged edges? To fix that, you're going to come up here to sides. Right now, the, the cylinder has 20 sides. Let's crank it up to 64. Look at how smooth that is. That looks nice and circular. All right, uh, let's get into raising objects. Let's say I wanted to raise this cylinder on top of the square. The first thing you're going to try to do is, heh, no, didn't work. Tink Cat sucks. I hate this. I quit. Relax. Try again. What are you going to do next? Well, you're probably going to say, I can outsmart Tinker Cat. Mm -hmm. I did it. No, you didn't do it. You, you set it behind the object. And that's fine. That, that's and a very natural way to think. Here's how you raise objects. We actually have to use, uh, it's not quite a node, but it's on the node face. Uh, we're going to use this arrow button right here. Not the bendy arrow, but this one that points straight up. And if you're zoomed really far away, uh, it gets a little bigger and easier for you to manipulate. You just click on it. You're left clicking and dragging and bring it up on top of whatever shape you're trying to put it on. Now, let's say I did not want to drag this with my mouse. One thing you can do is use your arrow keys, the up, down, left, right, and move it that way. Um, that's just kind of helpful if you need to move it up or down one or two little notches. Now, this looks right. Um, let's look at it from all angles. I did something wrong. Look at that. It's just floating. We can't have that. We want it setting directly on top. We want the cylinder directly on top of our cube. So what do we do? Well, we have to raise it down. Now I'm going to bring this out a little. It looks kind of good, but I actually have it inside, partially inside of my cube. How can I make sure that this guy is sitting directly on top of my cube? Well, I could just eyeball it. And when we're starting, that's going to be fine. Another thing we can do to make sure we're super 100% correct is look at the height of our cube. Our height is what? It's 20 millimeters. So my cylinder has to be exactly 20 millimeters high off the work plane. That is this distance right here. Here it says 20. The height of my cube is 20. So I know that these guys are, uh, are lined up perfectly. The bottom of my cylinder matches the top of my cube. Now, let's get into rotating. Rotating is pretty easy. Um, you remember these bendy arrows? That's where the, the rotating comes in. You can rotate things in three axes or three directions. You can look at it from the top and spin it this way. Whenever you click on that arrow, this uh, circular line thingy, that's called their compass. There's 360 degrees in the compass. And if you want to move it like degree by degree, take your mouse and like once you click on the arrow, bring it outside the compass and you can hit any degree that you want. But let's say we just needed to turn this, I don't know, 45 degrees. You could go 1, 2, 3, 45. Got it. No. You can do that, but there's an easier way to do that. If you keep your mouse inside of this compass, you will snap it to some very common measurements. 22.5, 45, city 7.5, and 90. Um, it's just easier. Most of the time when I'm rotating objects, it's to 45 or 90. So I always stay inside the compass. Now, one thing you have to watch out for when you're rotating things, once you click out of the compass, it resets your object. So if I turn this and then I wanted to say, all right, what did I turn this guy to? How many degrees did I turn it? Well, it is reset it. So now it's at zero degrees. So there's no way for me to know how tilted, how many degrees I tilted this. So if you're going to tilt stuff, you have to remember uh, what degree you tilted it to. Now, I remember it was 45. So if I wanted to bring it back, boom, boom, 45, and we are good. And again, you can tilt this on any axis that you would like. Now, here's a little shortcut. Let's say I, I brought this guy up off the work plane, but I want to bring it down to the bottom of the work plane real easily. You could click on this guy and go mm -hmm. until this number equals zero. You could also click here and type zero or an even quicker way. This is what the masters do. They click on their object and then on their keyboard, they click the D button. D, that stands for drop and it drops it right down to the work plane. All right, let's get into our skee-ball machine.
almost at the end of the video so we're going to work on the like blue area except for this curvy piece and then the walls let's start with a cube we're gonna scale it on down and go i don't know 12 13 something like that 10 will work we're gonna bring it out this way i don't know 40 and then let's make it longer that looks good now this uh angled piece we're not actually gonna have to tilt anything we're gonna use this wedge now it's it's oriented the wrong way right we want it uh, the other way so we're gonna have to rotate it again I'm gonna stay inside the compass snap it 90 degrees and I don't want it on the ground I want it sitting on top of my uh, body my body is how tall it's 10 tall so I need to raise this guy up 10 and I know it's 10 because I'm looking at this dimension right here now we need to make it the same width as my body so I'm gonna click on uh, if you really wanted to you could go corner node here that looks about right let's look at it from a couple different angles yep now I want to make this taller so I'm going to click on my top node and drag it upwards now I'm going to shrink it down a little bit we'll call that good looks about right everything's looking pretty solid all right now the walls uh, we're gonna make them wrong in this video and we'll fix them in the next video the walls are going to be made out of a cube but we're going to make it pretty skinny. We're going to shrink it down this way. That looks about right. Bring it all the way up here and drag it out to the end of my body. Now, we need to make another one of these walls. Here's a trick. This is what the masters do. They don't drag another one out and then try to make it exactly how this one is. Now, they don't do that. They use the duplicate tool. So they click on this guy. And you can either come up here and click this, or you can just click here and click on your keyboard with your left hand, control D. And it looks like nothing happened, but right now there's actually two walls, like basically in the same spot. You can either click on one and drag it, or when I duplicate stuff, I like to just use the, uh, the arrow keys. So that's the upright, down, left keys. Drag this guy over here, and that looks pretty good. Now I also need a back uh, where like my scoreboard will be. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna drag a uh, another one of these guys out because then I would have to make it the exact same height, and all that stuff. I'm gonna take this guy, Control D, duplicating it, and I'm gonna bring it backwards some. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees look at it from the top view line up my edge there and then drag this node here now I want my scoreboard to protrude or stick up some like this guy right here so I'm gonna click here and drag up now that's all we got for today we will start making this look more like a skee-ball machine and less like a bunch of blocks tomorrow